We start today with Britt Giroli. Britt wrote a column for The Athletic about Juan Soto and his pending free agency. Soto. Britt, what did you learn about what Soto will be valuing in his upcoming free agency? Well, I think, Sal, that the big factor for him is trust. And, and certainly, as illustrated through that story I wrote with The Athletic, he values people that he can trust. And if you're in his inner circle, as Kevin Long is, as Pat Rosser is, who was the Yankees assistant hitting coach this year, then Soto feels like he can be himself. I think him turning down that big contract by the Nationals, he really felt betrayed, and it kind of forced him to really look at who he felt like had his best interests at heart. And from a location perspective, I think New York is something that is comfortable to him. He has family here. He can you know, easily go see his parents. His parents can easily see him in the Dominican. So for a guy like Soto, it is all about comfort and trust. Mm, I want it to be about that money as well, Britt, feeling like the Mets <laughs> might have a chance if that would be the case. What kind of deal could Soto command on the open market this season? It seems like every day he sets foot on the field, it goes up and up and up. What are we looking at for Juan Soto? Yeah, okay, let's make no mistake. Money is always number one for these guys. But if we're going like two, three, four, you know, then we're getting into comfort and trust. But <laughs> certainly this guy's going to get more than the $440 million that he turned down from the Nationals two years ago. Every time, you're right, every time he gets a hit, you might as well ring up that register, another couple million. I mean, there are executives in this game, many who believe that he will go over that $500 million mark. There are people that are close to Soto that think that he is someone who is after records, whether it's Otani's AAV, which is valued at $43 million with all the deferrals and taking that into proper context. You know, I don't think he's going to get that $700 million unless he wants to defer what Otani did. But he's had a record already. He's making more than any arbitration eligible player ever has in this sport. So he has, quote, big eyes was maybe one of my favorite sayings in this story. He's hungry. He enjoys the bright lights of New York. And I think he knows he's going to get paid barring a catastrophe. Britt, do you think the results of this year, whether it is the success of the Yankees or failures of the Mets, will have a significant impact whether Juan Soto chooses one or the other? Not really, unless the Yankees win a World Series. And I don't think this was talked about enough in that article, but Juan Soto wants to win. I have people who tell, told me that out of everybody on that Padres team, he was the most competitive. He took the losses the hardest. So if the Yankees go out and they win a World Series, I do think that that would matter to Juan Soto. But if the Yankees go and they make the playoffs, they lose in the first round, whatever, I think Steve Cohen and David Stearns have an opportunity to lure Juan Soto to the Mets for a couple reasons. One, he is the guy there, bar none. He doesn't have to worry about, you know, a Fernando Tatis or a Manny Machado or an Aaron Judge. He could go and be the guy with the Mets. I know they have Lindor. I think everything we know about Lindor and McNeil and some of these guys, they would step aside and let Soto have the spotlight. And two, I find it very hard to believe if Steve Cohen says, let's go, I don't care what he wants, we're going to win this, that Scott Boris and Juan Soto, based on what they have said, based on their past, I find it very hard to believe that they would leave money on the table when it comes to this negotiation. So I think, Sal, you're right. I think the Mets have a real actual chance here. Now, I do think they'd have to hire Pat Rossler or Kevin Long or somebody Juan Soto feels comfortable with, but that's really pennies on the dollar when you're talking about bringing a guy like Juan Soto into your organization for the next decade or more. Yeah, I think the biggest challenge or the biggest hurdle would be if Juan Soto just loves being a Yankee so much and if the difference in what Steve Cohen would offer is not that significant to what Hal Steinbrenner would offer, that's where maybe the Mets would be at a disadvantage. But I love everything I'm hearing from you, Brett, because it means that the Mets are at least in play. Money is not going to be an issue, and dude, they're trying to build this thing the right way, and if Soto's not going to make it a deciding factor right now about who's closer to winning, then maybe the Mets have a, a realistic chance. Soto! 